Here's how you're going to figure out how an alternative thing is a sham or a scam. That's the level intensity of profiteering. Defeating cancer should not have a profit motive in it at all. In fact, that works against it. Find the alternative treatment that you can do yourself or devise yourself. Find the advisor, the alternative healer who is not looking to make a buck off you selling their books or selling you their pills, whatever, but who really wants to heal you. That's the critical thing. Welcome to Health Action. I'm Bob Letterer. Today, I'm honored to be speaking again with an amazing warrior for justice and liberation who has been battling colon cancer for more than four years. I'm talking about Fred Ho, the radical Chinese-American baritone saxophonist, composer, band leader, writer, producer, and self-described matriarchal socialist activist. His work appears regularly at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, the Guggenheim Museum, and the Apollo Theater, among others, and he's received fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts, the New York Foundation for the Arts, and the Rockefeller Foundation, among numerous awards. During Fred's last appearance on Health Action in July 2009, he offered an inspiring account of a self-empowered journey through cancer. At that point, Fred, with the help of a remarkable support network that he built, using a truly integrative approach of Western and alternative and nutritional treatments, appeared to be on a path to recovery, but he has suffered many setbacks and advances since then. I want to give listeners a chance to have not only an update on Fred's journey, but also his even more profound and radical insights on how he needs to fight the disease and how the society as a whole needs to fundamentally change its structures that promote cancer. Fred, thanks so much for coming in today to speak with our listeners. Really glad to be with you again, Bob. So to briefly review, you were diagnosed with stage 3B colon cancer in August 2006. Since then, you've kept an engaging and thought-provoking cancer war diary periodically emailed to friends, which brilliantly documents your journey and your growing insights. After a lot of research, you decided on an integrative therapy program that included chemotherapy, a special diet, supplements, herbal teas, exercise, and removing yourself from what you call the treadmill of a career. And perhaps most important was a support network that you inspired among your friends. Now over this period, the cancer initially went into remission and then returned four times, with the longest remission lasting almost a year and a half up until the summer of this year. So Fred, can you walk us through the twists and turns of your many treatments and setbacks and advances over the past four plus years? In August of 2006, after a really long bout of diarrhea that could not be explained through viral tests, I had a colonoscopy at age 48. The American Cancer Society suggests that men after age 50 begin re regular colonoscopies, but I, my, my primary care physician said, since we can't find anything bacteriological, let's do a colonoscopy. And this very large tumor was found that it had uh, penetrated, pierced the perine per perineum, and it was stage at 3B. Um, so I immediately had a colon resection, removal of the tumor, and then proceeded right into the first line treatment of, uh, of the mainstream medical establishment's cancer uh, protocols, and that is the Folfox combination of three chemotherapy drugs, uh, fluorouracil, leucovorin, and oxaliplatin. That lasted for six months. Um, and then I had felt a tumor coming back, that same tumor coming back in around, around June of 2007. That was not actually confirmed until August and September with two colonoscopies that that first tumor was a recurrence in the exact same place and almost the exact same size. So what became clear was that the full Fox treatment, that first line of, of uh, chemotherapy protocol um, was ineffective, did not work. Um, you know, and I 
proceeded into using the last three remaining chemotherapy drugs for colorectal cancer, uh, Zolota, uh, Irinotecan, and Cetexamab, uh, as, as well as combine that with radiation treatment uh, at the end of 2007 and early into 2008. Um, Tests indicated that perhaps this combined new cocktail and radiation shrank this recurrent tumor maybe about as much as 30%. I had another colon resection in late March of 2008, then again hit with the chemotherapy cocktail. I also uh, was given a temporary ileostomy bag during that time. Um, that bag was reversed and the chemotherapy treatments ended by the end of July, early August 2008. However, in December of 2008, I was now getting, instead of annual colonoscopies, colonoscopies now every six months. In December of 2008, a new, what they call second primary tumor now appeared, not in the same location, but much closer to the border of my rectum and anus. Um, that was sta that was a, a stage 1B tumor, small. That was surgically removed through what they call a transanal excision in February of 2009. I did not receive any more chemotherapy or radiation because during this period of time, I lost my left kidney through poisoning by all this chemotherapy and radiation treatment. Um, I also suffered extreme peripheral neuropathy pain, numbness, tingling to my extremities, my fingers, and my hands. I'm a saxophone player. Uh, it was very difficult to play the saxophone during that time um, or any finer um, movements uh, with my fingers, my hands. Um, so chemotherapy radiation now is, was off the table. So that transanal excision happened in February of 2009, and I decided to develop my own recovery and therapy treatments, which um, I went to a friend's farm in the northern Catskills and worked there one week out of every single month from April to October of 2009. Now, a lot of benefits came from that. I was growing organic food, eating it straight from the ground. The increased nutritional density was really beneficial to me being you know, in the fresh air, high altitude, drinking well water, uh, vitamin D from the sunlight, and also sweat therapy. I was sweating, 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 working on a farm every single day when I was up there. Um, all those were very, very beneficial to me. However, when the growing season ended, I came back, resumed my life as a professional artist in New York City. For the spring and summer of 2010, I did not return back to the farm I was feeling good. I really wanted to rebuild a professional life, creative life again. And I spent my time in New York City. I did not go back up to the Northern Catskills. Well, by early fall of this year, 2010, um, that third tumor came back. That was another recurrence. However, at a much higher staging, the first tumor was a T1. This is now a T3. Um, it had pierced the wall of my rectum. Um, and now I'm dealing with this fourth tumor. I've had four tumors in four years. Uh, and it's, you know, um, been a major challenge, uh, you know, just to, to continue. And uh, at one point, after the transanal excision in February 2009, I had contemplated suicide, taking my life. Because for 12 days and nights, I couldn't sleep because I was in excruciating pain. Why? Because the surgeon could not sew me back up again because I had too much scar tissue, so I had to heal naturally. However, I was not informed directly by the surgeon, so for two weeks before my follow-up appointment after that surgery, in that 12 days or so, I was in um, horrific pain. I understand now what, 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 what torture is like, and I was looking for any kind of relief, including taking my own life. Um, so I'm now at this point where I am fighting really literally for my life um, against a fourth colorectal cancer tumor in four years. And we're speaking with 
composer, musician, and activist Fred Ho about his journey through cancer. So Fred, um, in September of this year, you were diagnosed with a recurrence of your tumor, this time in, in your rectum, and um, your entire medical team said that the only option for you was surgery to remove the tumor. And after a lot of thought and, um, and investigation of other options, you took a different path. And you wrote in your diary in November um, that you were on a, quote, new experimental pathway to once and for all defeating cancer, a completely 100% raw food diet without any sugar-producing elements devoid of all fruits and certain vegetables such as carrots, beets, and corn. Um, now, you had earlier written that you decided on this path after speaking with another cancer survivor who was thriving on a raw diet named Joseph Chamas. So tell us about um, how you came to this decision and um, what the diet is like and, and what the impact has been on your health. Bob, let me just uh, clarify something. Um, the mainstream medical establishment was just not proposing surgery. They're proposing now the complete removal of my rectum, the sewing up of the uh, anus, and the installation of a colostomy, permanent colostomy bag, much more extreme than simply a resection or an excision. Um, and while uh, I can, uh, I've come to peace with the idea of that proposal, um, I am now looking for a real solution. Um, because when my sister, who's a physician, directly asked the surgeon, what are Fred's curative chances going this route of a complete rectal removal and installation of a colostomy bag, the surgeon said, perhaps very truthfully, I don't know. I can't accept that. I need to know what will work now. I have been a good soldier. I took the orders from the mainstream medical establishment. I followed them probably with more tenacity and determination and appliance than most, um, to varying mixed results. Yes, I'm still alive, but I've encountered many, many losses. I've drawn the line. I'm not going to encounter any more losses to the quality of my life. I'm certainly not going to je jeopardize my ability to play the saxophone or to be creatively involved. Uh, losing my ability to make music would be a walking death for me. Yes, I would be alive, but not have no soul. Um, so I decided that now I should really investigate all of the alternative pathways um, a lot more in depth with a lot more um, tenacity than I had in the past. And also the decision um, to really uh, no longer uh, take my orders or my commands from the Western mainstream allopathic medical establishment. So I had been hearing about the raw food diet, but much more than a raw food, an extreme raw food diet uh, that was being proposed in which cruciferous green leafy vegetables, sprouts, uh, wheatgrass juice, um, and the complete elimination of sugar intake, including um, fruits, fruit juices, sugar, high sugar producing vegetables like carrots, corn, beets, um, you know, and to uh, starve cancer, uh, to really suffocate it with chlorophyll, oxygen, and deprive it of, of, it, uh, of cancer, of sugar. Um, and I found a guy, you know, I, all, all the alternative claims um, have many anecdotes. But understandably, you know, they're not, they're not real clinical studies around them because there's no incentive for any industry to fund it because the, 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 there's not a, as much of a profit making from, as, as a, from the pharmaceutical industry. So, you know, I, I was wary of not being able to verify a lot of these anecdotes. So I finally found someone who had stage four colon cancer, had metastasized to his liver, and I actually spoke to him on the phone. So I found this man, Joseph Chamas, who had faced stage four colorectal cancer that had metastasized to his liver. He had gone the raw food, extreme raw food path. 
and I was able to talk to him directly. We spoke for almost two hours, and I interrogated him about his medical history. I did a really uh, in-depth due diligence about his case and everything. And what I heard from the him um, convinced me that uh, I should at least try it, that this would be experimental. There were no guarantees. There are no guarantees on the Western mainstream side anymore. Just to give you some background to that, when I first was diagnosed with colorectal cancer in 2006, I was given two out of three chances of living. Not too bad. The recurrence, less than one out of two chances. Worse. The new third tumor, one in 30,000 chances of living. Very bad. Now time, now with this current fourth tumor, no chances. No chances stated. So everything that I try right now is going to be experimental. Um, so I spoke with Mr. Chamas, and he ran down all the details of the raw food. And, um, you know, I've come to now my wit's end. Uh, I'm not going to take any more losses. I'm not going to, um, you know, incur greater social costs in terms of my treatments. My treatments probably have come to over well over a million dollars now. Um, you know, uh, I am not going to um, be dependent upon pharmaceuticals anymore. Um, you know, my anger, my frustration, all the psychic um, pulverization I've gone through, I've gotten through this experience, has now convinced me that there's a qualitative difference between life, which is what doctors and the medical establishment strive for, versus living. And if I'm going to go soon, then I want to go living the fullest to the, my maximum capacity, you know, and to um, be living in a way in which I'm better as a human being, not, you know, uh, deteriorating. So I've been, I started the raw food, extreme raw food pathway uh, mid-fall. And it's been remarkable for me. However, it has not stopped the growth of the tumor. But I still advocate that everyone should go this way. In fact, I think it's best for society as a whole. But in my case, it is my feeling, knowing how cancer has grown inside of me for four years now. I've always known when I've had a tumor inside of me, even though the CEA, which is the carcinoma embryonic antigen chest te tests, and the PT, CT scans say I'm cancer free. I knew when the cancer was there. The only thing that worked to me were the um, colonoscopies and ultrasound scans that actually verified the existence of a tumor when those other tests did not. Well, for me right now, what is critical is that uh, I want to have the rest of my life on my terms. And so the losses that I incurred were great. And the raw food diet has, in a short amount of time, with absolutely minimal cost, solved them for me. It has not solved the cancer war for me. Perhaps nothing will. Um, I don't believe that, as, as, as those of you who followed my uh, cancer war diary, my thinking, know that I do not believe that any cure can be found for cancer as long as capitalism exists. Well, we're going to get back to your view of um, the role that capitalism plays in this in just a minute. But first, I, I'd like you to expand on how you've been feeling in the um, two to three months since you've adopted this extreme raw foods diet, because uh, you've written about a really remarkable turnaround in your day-to-day -day quality of life. So tell us about that. Bob, I am feeling, even though four years out in the cancer war with four tumors, the best I've ever felt my entire life. Uh, I feel like I'm in my 20s. I think I found the el el elixir for the fountain of youth. Here's how the raw food diet has changed me on a physical as well as on a psychic, philosophical, spiritual level. First, because I had hydronephrosis 
of my left kidney, my left kidney became non-functioning. I had a lot of strain put on my only right kidney. My blood pressure became dangerously high. I had numbers as recent as this past summer, 2010, 170 over 120. In two weeks, my blood pressure became perfect, 120 over 80. In four weeks, my blood pressure became even better, 117 over 70. Here's another thing. Throw away all the dieting, weight loss things that you've been sold or told. I lost one pound a day. For 45 days, I lost 45 pounds. I believe that eating a raw food diet, which is what primitive humans had, you know, done for well over a million years, that we will kind of come down sans, without the intrusion of industrial food production, to the weight nature intended us to be, which is to be at the maximum health. As your um, weight stabilized? My weight loss has um, slowed down. In the last 10 days, I've lost two pounds. I started from about 100 and, no, sorry, from 225 pounds down to now about 183. Uh, so it's slowing down a lot more. I haven't stopped how much yet. Um, I can go on and on. The peripheral neuropathy is almost non-existent in my hands. I'm playing the saxophone better than I've ever played. I still have more problems with my feet, but not as extreme that I used to have where you know I was in constant pain all the time. What else? Um, because of nerve damage through all the surgeries I've had, I uh, lost uh, sexual functioning. That has started slowly to come back. And I can go on and on and on of all the different things, um, the ailments that have been fixed because of the raw food. Now, I've lost a lot of weight, but I've not lost strength or, you know, uh, stamina. In fact, you know, I do hand-to-hand -hand combat training. My hand-to-hand -hand combat training exercises are almost close to the optimum I had achieved 15, 20 years ago. Um, so even though I'm 53 years old, I feel like, and I weigh what I did in my mid-20s. How remarkable is that? You know, but I have to stress, this was an extreme raw food diet. No fruits, no fruit juices, no fruit producing vegetables. No carbs or starches whatsoever. Um, but here's what's happened philosophically. I actually enjoy food a lot more. And I've rejected industrial food production. I'm not interested in restaurants anymore. I opened up with a friend of mine, my own restaurant in my neighborhood called Eat. Go to eatgreenpoint.com and you'll find out about this place. This is food from the farm that I worked at. Um, you know, I make my meals myself. I turned off all of the gas for my stove and my oven. I don't have gas bills anymore. I can still keep the stove there because I'm told by a friend if I took it out, it would decrease the value of my apartment. So it's now a shelf. Um, you know, and uh, the quality of my food, I still have a, a large appetite, is much better than ever before. Now, I've added to that extreme raw path. I do eat raw seafood. Uh, I've included that lately. Uh, I'm modifying it as I go along just to, and you know, as my body feels and understands and takes different kinds of things. But I want to be clear, this may not probably defeat cancer. Um, I'm trying new treatments now, some extreme Chinese alternative treatments that I'm very, uh, that, I, that have profoundly changed me as well, and that perhaps that may be another episode for your uh, show. But philosophically, I have extricated myself even further from this technocentric industrial capitalist matrix, and I feel great about it. I feel liberated. I feel that I understand what the revolution must be, what it must look like, what it must implement, 
much more clearer, sharply than ever before. Um, so th those are the profound changes that have happened in about two and a half months. Rapid, uh, accelerative kinds of changes. Again, not maybe, maybe not insufficient to defeat cancer, but profound nonetheless, and important to have, to have done. This experiment, even if I don't win in the fight against cancer, this experiment was truly worth doing. And I think all people should go raw food. You know, I think that we will create a revolution, a raw revolution, if we advocate this. Uh, Fred Ho, you've compiled the entries from your cancer war diaries into a book entitled Diary of a Radical Cancer Warrior, Fighting Cancer and Capitalism at the Cellular Level. Um, tell us quickly uh, what's the status of publishing that book. My cancer war diary, uh, I'm glad to say, will come out in the fall of 2011. Hopefully I'll still be alive when the book is published, but it's being published by Sky Horse uh, Publishing. In the meantime, some of your cancer diary entries are up on your website, which is www.bigredmediainc, all one word, bigredmediainc.com. And uh, that's also a way that people can contact you. So, Fred, you've um, referred to the need to come out from under the technocentric capitalist matrix. So tell us very briefly, as our, our time is almost up, um, what that would involve. Cancer and capitalism are inextricable as accelerative malignant processes. Capitalism is the cancer for Mother Earth. Cancer is the capitalist toxicity for the human individual. Well, I want to thank you so much, Fred Ho, for being with us today, for um, maintaining such a, a strong and clear fight against cancer, and for sharing all of your twists and turns <clears throat> and all the difficulties that you faced and all the new paths you've gone down, down with the larger community. Um, and we'll continue to follow your journey <clears throat> and wish you the best of luck. And that's it for this edition of Health Action. I'm Bob Lederer. I want to thank John Riley for engineering this segment. And until next time, stay healthy and stay balanced. And if you want to listen to this segment again and get more information, go to our website, www wbaihealthaction.org. Again, wbaihealthaction.org.